who DNL did it for the update. I just got off a call with Idris Sandu and he was talking about the link company in the marketplace and www.thewearableinternet.com showing off their sweaters and shoes that have chips and it's um, actually putting a marriage with the metaverse and the physical universe that we're in. So um, check out what he had to say and I also have the website up so you can see while he's talking. Look at, uh, we, we call it white ethnicity. Um, the artist will be able to see all the people that came to the concert the time that they interacted, the artist can perform, uh, can reach out to you directly, or they can even send you a digital collectible for showing up to the concert. Um, never been done before, right? And we're giving people, you know, that ability now um, in a very unique way. We're not the project that we did a cryptocurrency, you know, ICO, and, you know, the coin you invested in that was at five cents went to $100. That is not sustainable. Um, that's not going to convince more people to get into the metaverse because more than likely, as fast as it went up, as it'll, it'll go down even quicker. So we're introducing a new variable for you to, you know, get in the world of cryptocurrency, get in the world of the blockchain, get into the metaverse without having to, you know, go super into, um, you don't have to, you know, really focus on, oh man, like I need to be a, you know, web three developer, or I need to really understand this technicalities. I believe that the metaverse right now is too complex and overly complicated for the average person to want to get involved. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to break it down in a way that makes sense through real world products, real world utility. If you buy a sweater or a shoe, it's still a shoe if the market goes up or down, right? If you buy an NFT and the market goes up and it goes down, that you know receipt <laughs> that you own um, to a file is still authentic. Um, but the file or whatever it was associated with is significantly much lower um, in, in value. And so, you know, we're really, really excited to see what the community does and comes up with in terms of different things that can be wear dropped. Um, but at the very least, I think it gives us a new way, a different lens through to authenticate products, right? You can see like a grandma that, you know, she can have files within her wear drive that she can go back and whenever she's thinking about her kids or her grandkids she can go back and view all the videos attached to the particular item it's a form of nostalgia you can now tap and see all the places that you've been with that item all the people you've interacted with we go to networking events all the time we don't remember everyone we connected with but now what if it was as simple as a tap and then you can go back and you can look at all the people that you connected with so you know and it forces people to be more socialized right this technology requires close proximity. There is no instance where you walk into a store and we automatically know you're in the store. There will never be an instance where somebody can, you know, get your information without them giving it to you. That's exact. That's the precise reason why we placed it here, right? We placed it here for a specific reason, right? To make sure that users can, you know, you have to have a direct contact with that person before, you know, asking to connect with them. And it's completely up to you. You might just like, you know, how the clothes feel and stuff like that. And you might be like, I don't care about all that other stuff. I'm turning everything off. You will have all the, the option to control your social presence in a completely new way. Um, so the we got a question around the space capacity with the wear drive. Uh, with the wear drive. Um, our Founders Edition, people that are buying the Founders Edition version, which is available now on the wearableinternet.com. I pinned it. Um, you know, they will have the ability to get uh, a specific amount of storage on the wear drive that I can't disclose yet for free, right? For being for, um, you know, part of the, um, uh, the founders editions. Um, but yeah, we also have a subscription model as well. So this is just one way that we're propelling things. Um, and fashion is just the right avenue for kind of showing the utility that it can have. We're going to spread into so many different things. There's so many exciting collaborations. If y'all know me, <laughs> then y'all know. But there's so many collaborations we're doing with multi-tiered brands. You saw some of them at you know our keynote last week and a half. We had Polygon, we had IKEA, we had Space Ten, Space Ten, which is IKEA's research division. We had Polygon, we had Tidal, right? So we're coming in with very high level partners we have a glasses collaboration coming I, I can't speak on that too much but that's coming 
Um, so that's going to be great. And what's cool about this whole ecosystem is you get to have a, something we call an aura. Your aura is your digital version of you, right? And your aura will unlock physical items that you have as well, right? So if I own this hoodie, I can apply it to my hoodie, uh, to my aura. If I have a specific shoe, excuse me. <coughs> If I have a specific shoe or I have a specific item, I can actually apply it to my aura. And for those of you that, guys that haven't seen the auras yet, let me kind of just show them to you. So over here, here we are. Um, let's go to the aura screen. So this is, oops, this is what your aura can look like at any time. And you have all these different customizations to modify your aura. And it shows that way in multiple different instances, right? So everywhere you explore throughout the Link ecosystem, you would unlock new clothes and stuff like that that you can apply to your aura. Um, so, you know, um, I, I just saw a very important question that I wanna answer now. Somebody asked, how does the product protect you from surveillance, especially since it's always tracking your location? Um, I want to clarify on this statement. There is no GPS technology inside of the chip. We are not tracking your location. We do not know where you are. Instead, what we're doing is when people tap on this, right, we're cross-syncing the location provided from the phone, and then we're storing it in the servers, right? There is no, you know, we're, we know where you are at all times. No, none of that. And at any time, if you feel uncomfortable ab around the ability to allow you to track your items, you can always turn it off. It's not, you know, um, it's, you know, nobody can make you, you know, turn specific settings on. And really with the advent of iOS 16, user privacy is a huge, huge, huge um, focus too, right? So, you know, um, um, yeah, somebody just brought up a very great point. You're the only one, uh, you're the only user who's authenticated to access the info uh, provided by the link chip in your product. So it's just constantly pinging and sending out the signals unless you choose to. Absolutely. Um, so scalability and security and decentralization, you know, our, our, our partner Polygon comes in there and you know, they really, they really do that. So this is a new way to invest with very limited risk, right? Um, you know, you invest in some cryptocurrency, it goes down, that's a loss. You invest into physical items, whether they go up or down, you still own the physical products, right? You paid for the base of this. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, you know, the ecosystem. We're really excited. We got so much traction um, when we launched this. Uh, you know, at the event, we had Kyrie come through. We had, you know, um, Andre 3000, Will I Am, Bobby Wagner, you know, Vic Mensa. Like, it was really, really, really great. Um, and every year we're going to throw these events. Next year, we're going to unveil another project that we've been working on. For those that have been kind of following the socials and everything closely, you guys know what it is. Um, but that's a, another project. We are vertically integrating our version of what we think the metaverse of things can be. Um, 19 Keys came through, you know. We're integrating it in a, in a completely different way. So we really look forward to continuing that. And I really wanted to kind of like hop in here, take some questions. I know we have like a lot of people um, uh, that have some, you know, questions. Someone says, does the tech run true to size? Yes. So we've created a new system to break down sort of sizing um, within uh, fashion, right? We don't want to kind of be like, you're a small, medium, small, medium, large XL and stuff. Um, I personally don't resonate with that sizing. So we've created another sizing that starts with A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. Um, so the clothing is slightly, slightly, just a little bit um, oversized, slightly. Um, and um, the shoes run true to size. So if you're an 11, I would buy an 11. But if you're a half size, we don't have half sizes yet. So if you are somebody that is a half size, what I would do is I would just go up. Um, yeah, for sure. So uh, have we thought about getting into the cologne space? Um, Stay tuned. That's my answer to that. Um, 
are there limited amounts for the drops? 100%. Um, when we're initially launching this, we want to reward the people that are already buying this early and incentivizing them to hold on early. So there will be exclusive drops. For the first time in history, after you buy an item, the brand will still be able to communicate with you and give you access to certain things, right? So for us, our fir- you'll have exclusive access to the first drops. You'll get notifications on your phone saying, hey, you know, this shoe is now available in your size. Tap now to gain access to buy it. You tap and then you have access to buy it, right? So someone asked a question, couldn't someone rob you easily? That's a very good question. How do we you know, manage theft within the platform? The great thing is when you create an account, like you guys will be doing either on this call or after this call, is once you buy an item in our ecosystem, it's linked to your meta ID. If someone steals the item from you, um, they won't be able to do anything with it. They won't be able to sell it to someone else. Yeah, they can always, you know, there's always going to be people that do the black market selling, but we're changing ownership transfers. So if I'm going to buy something from you that I know is link enabled, I want to do it on the blockchain so I can convert the ownership away from me to you. Just like, for example, if you are selling me a car, I want the pink slip. (laughs) I want the title. If I don't have those things, then technically the car is not in my possession. So that's what we're doing. We're creating a new way, so even in the, um, you know, even with theft, um, people will be incentivized not to do that because they won't be able to, you know, they won't be able to sell it to anybody else on the link platform in the marketplace. And what's also amazing is we've created our own marketplace, right? We've created our own marketplace, and you're going to see so many different brands over the next year, over the next couple of months that are listing, you know, um, uh, some of their products on there. So there we go, right there. That's like the perfect way of breaking it down. Um, So that's a great question. Why are there skin tones or skin colors? Well, we don't really view them as skin colors. We view them as hues. And we actually curated our skin tones with Pantone Skin Color Guide. The reason why we do that is, for example, as a founder of, you know, a multi-million dollar brand and company, um... I'm, I used to always be in instances where I was, you know, using certain avatars or using certain, you know, um, emoji or whatever that didn't look like me, right? So it didn't properly represent me. So we worked with Pantom to make sure that the hues that are supported on this platform are as diverse as possible, right? Making sure that everybody can, you know, feel like, oh, yo, I, this is more of my personality. That's why we included them into the platform. Um, so let's go. How do you uh, think this will impact the resale market? Um, I think in a positive way. Um, currently with the resale market, you know, we see the memes online of people being like, you know, this company or that company authenticating products. And it's like, did y'all even look to make sure that item was what it was? Um, we're integrating our technologies from the supply chain. That's something that very few people in this space are doing and to have the infrastructure to be able to continue doing it. These are not some clothes that we, you know, licensed or whatever. This is completely from scratch. We, in fact, created our own uh, tech packs and trademarked everything, right? Um, So within the secondary market, it's very difficult to maintain authenticity with products. So not only are we allowing you to do authenticity, authenticate with products, right? We're also giving you the ability to direct sell to anybody peer to peer without, you know, uh, majority of a, of a third party. So as you can see here, the shoe right here is made in 10 minutes, right? And it's authenticated in one. That's how fast you can authenticate products on the platform. So let's look at some more questions. Uh, yeah, it runs through the size. Uh, yes, there are limited items for the drop. Um, can the Crocs come out in 13.5? Uh, the clogs, uh, you were working on supporting more sizes, right? Um, we, we definitely got like people that are like size 16, 15 and stuff. So probably a drop two, um, we'll be able to do that. But again, we are doing something that hasn't been done before and it takes an extreme level of, it's, it, it takes time. I'll say that. Um, so as long as you're patient with us, you know, we will work to, you know, support more sizes over time. 